So, so body dysmorphic disorder um, is characterised by people having a uh, concern about looking ugly or disfigured uh, when they in fact look normal. And what distinguishes this from you know, normal levels of vanity or self-consciousness is that someone with body dysmorphic disorder, it affects uh, their social functioning. They might not go out to social events because they're scared of people judging them or it affects their uh, work or other important area uh, in their life. And muscle dysmorphia is a subtype of body dysmorphic disorder. Look, I, th I, don't, I don't think it's um, increasing. Uh, what I do think is that more uh, awareness is being uh, put on um, body dysmorphic disorder and muscle dysmorphia. Um, what we know is that uh, body image problems have been around for a long, long, long time. Um, but often they weren't, uh, they weren't picked up on. You know, I think in the last decade or so, with the um, advent of the selfie, um, uh, the advent of social media, um, that this has turbocharged the, um, the already uh, uh, existing disorder and, and, and the problems. So some of the research that's come out about uh, the cause of muscle dysmorphia has come from brain imaging and neuroscience. And what uh, our team did was we uh, collected the biggest sample of body dysmorphic disorder and muscle dysmorphia um, uh, neuroimaging uh, uh, data. And what we did was we analysed it and compared it to people without uh, muscle dysmorphia or body dysmorphic disorder. And what we found was that the part of the brain involved with error signals this is the part of the brain that lights up when something's gone wrong and we think something's wrong, you know, something's not right. Um, what we find is that it, with people with muscle dysmorphia, this part of the brain is lighting up for almost all of the day. And what this means is that people with muscle dysmorphia are misattributing um, this error signal in their brain to, I'm not big enough, I'm not muscly enough, something's wrong with my body. And, what, and, and so they can end up comparing themselves, looking at the mirror and thinking, oh, something's wrong, I'm not big enough. Um, some of the other research findings from this brain imaging uh, data is that people with muscle dysmorphia aren't very good at integrating detailed visual analysis with holistic visual analysis. Um, and so what this means is that uh, people with muscle dysmorphia can just look at one aspect of their appearance without are integrating it to the whole. So while they might look at their bicep and say that's way too small, if they actually looked at their bicep um, in comparison to the rest of their body, they'll be like, well, it's big enough compared to the rest of my body. Um, but they tend to look at, at, at body parts separate from the whole of their body. And the reason why they do this is a part of the brain called the corpus callosum, which connects the left hand side of the brain with the right hand side of the brain. The left hand side of the brain is associated with detailed visual analysis and the right hand side of the brain is about um, integrating that into a holistic picture. And if the corpus callosum isn't communicating information between the left and the right, it means that they'll get fixated on small aspects of their appearance uh, rather than seeing the bigger picture and, and, and having perspective. The other really interesting neuroimaging result is in terms of um, how people with muscle dysmorphia um, relate to other people. What we've found is that people with this disorder will often, uh, will often misinterpret facial expressions and, and perceive other people to be angry or aggressive even though their facial expression is neutral. And we found this by flashing up pictures of angry faces or neutral faces while people were in an MRI machine. And we found that the amygdala, the emotional part of the brain was hyperactive whether we showed them emotional faces, angry faces, or neutral faces. And so what this might mean in, in, um, in practical terms is when these people are working out at the gym, they're pumping iron, and they see someone walk past, they'll think, that person just looked at me in an angry or a judging way. And then they'll think, because they've got this error message in their brain, they'll think, and that means something's wrong with me, and it must mean because I'm not muscly enough. Yeah, so I mean we can uh, collect neuroimaging data and, and know intimately what's happening in the brain and for me what this changes in, in terms of my clinical practice and, and working with these people in terms of psychotherapy is well firstly um, 
we've got a really good basis to know what's happening. Um, and so uh, patients find this very reassuring when we know what's happening. Plus we know what activities, what exercises can reverse these brain changes. Um, neuroplasticity means um, that the brain is constantly changing and depending on what behaviors we do and what we pay attention to, um, 